I offer my life to you, Lord. My God, I trust in you. Please don't let me be put to shame. Do, let my, do not let my enemies rejoice over me. For that matter, don't let anyone who hopes in you be put to shame. Instead, let those who are treacherous without excuse be put to shame. Make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Teach it to me, because you are the God who saves me. I put my hope in you all day long. Lord, remember your compassion and faithful love. They are forever. But don't remember the sins of my youth or my wrongdoing. Remember me only according to your faithful love for the sake of your goodness, Lord. The word of the Lord. Guide me along the way, for if you lead me, I cannot stray. O oh Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. Alexander Campbell once famously said, or at least wrote, the only difference between a hymn and a prayer is the meter. <laughs> and maybe the fact that we've set one to a tune. But that the difference between music and prayer is so fluid as to sometimes become lost in that gray area in between them. And so it is with our psalms, as Janice picked up on in her time with all of God's children earlier this morning. The psalms were written as songs to be sung, to be heard and shared, but is there not also a value of prayer to be found within these words? I was drawn to the psalm today because it invites us to be in an attitude of prayer, but not in a way that we traditionally might have known. And I was drawn to it in such a way that it reminded me of those words that I just sang. I did a little research, and technically, the author ascribes the words to lead me, guide me, to a different psalm. But the themes are close enough that I thought it would fit and it would work. And it's some of the same themes that I heard in our psalm today. I am going to put my trust in you, O oh God, to show me the way. I'm going to put my trust in you, O oh God, that you will extend salvation. I will trust that you will deliver me from the hands of those who oppose me. You will save me from my enemies, that you will lift me up in the times of trial. I will trust that you will forget the sins that stand in our way. 
There's a lot of words in this psalm, but the words simply stand in front of and represent something that I think is deeper, a deeper aspect of this idea of prayer, not just that we are taking the moment to speak with God, but that we are finding a way to engage and to be open. Let's think about this one for just a second. And I'm, I'm being rhetorical, so don't really raise your hands. But how many of you hear these words, these words that call for an almost implicit trust, an unquestioning trust in God? How many of us hear those and then struggle to live that out? It ain't always easy, is it? If I implicitly trusted God to pay the electrical bill, <laughs> I know how this one's going to end up. If I implicitly trusted God not to put my old former rear-wheel drive vehicle in the ditch when it's snowing, I may or may not get away with that one. It is hard to implicitly trust because sometimes we know we need to look around and we need to make a judgment call and go, yes, I trust God, but I need to take care of this one for right now. And yet, there's something in those words of being able to trust and almost let go. Prayer, when it becomes an act not just of speaking, but of listening for the divine. And when it can move beyond the act of the audio, from not just listening for the divine, but opening ourselves at the level of the heart, opening our souls to be present with the divine and allow God to be present with us, to trust in the face of answers we cannot find, to reach out and step forward in faith when we cannot see the path, to know that our sins have been forgiven, but we will sin again and trust that God will once more forgive again. If prayer is the act of stepping out in a way of trust, does that change the way we pray? Does it change the way that we live? We all know we live in a wonderfully and beautifully anxious and anxiety-producing world. There are so many things to wind us up that even Joe Cool and his amazing sunglasses could find himself worried about whether Charlie Brown was going to bring that next meal. We live in a world where anxiety can almost be the order of the day, where we find ourselves looking at all of life as that electric bill in which trust but pay. <laughs> And we find ourselves in a place where life bleeds over into less trust and more do. I have these responsibilities in which I must engage. I have to take on the weight of my life and the life of the people around me. Perhaps it's the weight of the church and the leadership roles that we take on. We find ourselves burying all of our time and our effort and our work into doing and along the way, have we lost the ability to trust? I've struggled with the Psalms. I don't preach them that often. Maybe you've noticed. Sometimes it's because we see the same themes emerging from Psalm to Psalm. And how many times can I tell you the same thing differently before you catch on to the fact that I'm recycling sermons, right? But I've struggled with the Psalms because sometimes the message almost feels too simple to be useful, trust, be open, be still and know that God is here, God is near, and God will carry us forward. Boy, be still and know that I am God. How hard is it to be still so that we can have that moment and know God? I realized after I had planned this scripture selection for this morning that the readings that the Thrive Book Study Group have been doing have been creeping their way not only into my thoughts but into my words and 
As I was reading the psalm today, I started finding the parallels with what Ruth had written in the book Thrive in the opening chapter. The first spiritual habit of transforming congregations is prayer. And you know the funny thing is, of all the things she wrote about prayer in that chapter, almost none of them had anything to do with what we say. They're all about how we live and how we live our prayers. In fact, she presented prayer as a discipline for stepping back from an anxious, busy world which presents us not only with opportunities but with responsibilities. The mountain of things that we feel that we much do, that idea that we have a finite amount of time and a seemingly infinite amount of tasks to accomplish within it. And the discipline of prayer is stepping back, putting our trust in God, breathing, and knowing that we will make it through. This is an important discipline for us as individuals in the faith. But it's also an important discipline for us as communities of faith. How little time we have to give to the work of this community and to our mission beyond the walls. And yet, how much time do we spend doing the work of this community and the mission beyond our walls? We pile up the hours in the day and yet we feel like we've accomplished so little and there is so much more yet to do. And perhaps the answer is to step back, pause, breathe, and pray. I don't know whether he actually said this or not, but I am told that Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther, the earlier one, the Reformation one, would wake up in the morning and he would look at his notes and go, boy, I have a whole lot of things that I need to accomplish today. I'd better pray an extra hour this morning. Think about that. Think about that. And not only would he do the prayer, but he would accomplish his work. Sometimes we require the discipline of prayer as an act of trust to know that we have the time that we need. We have the energy that we need. The resources are there to do what God is calling us to do. We just need to quit running around in a flurry trying to accomplish it all and step back and pray. I will put my trust in you, O oh God, that you will show me the path. I will put my trust in you, O oh God, that regardless of the sins that I have put between us, you will find a way to me. I will trust in you, O oh God, that even though the world will seek to entrap and mislead and ensnare me, you will lift me up and protect me. I will trust that when the load looks overwhelmingly, looks overwhelming, excuse me, you will help me see it through. Lead me, guide me along the way. I can think of no better words of implicit trust and I can think of no greater need for myself, for us as a faith community, for us as people of faith in this world to be able to step back and to lead a life of prayer, not filled with words, knowing that if we just say the right thing, God will see us through, but stepping back when the words will not come and trusting that God will show us the path. Stepping back when the schedule seems too overloaded and trusting that God will grant us the time. Stepping back when the needs are great and our energy is low. Trusting that God will help us see it through. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. O oh God, O oh Lord, let me walk with you each day by day. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. May we find a way to open ourselves to the simple wisdom of the psalmist, the simple wisdom of our hymn lyricist, and the simple wisdom of our God. And lead lives of prayer, open, trusting, 
and welcoming the presence of God. Amen.